stakeholders will make or break your project. Therefore, it is critical to be able to analyze who they are, what they need, how they think. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to my top six stakeholder analysis tools. My first stakeholder analysis tool is a stakeholder triage. It is very similar to the more common two by two stakeholder analysis four box model, but this one is slightly different and I believe slightly more useful in many circumstances. In this tool, as the two axes, we plot attitude to the change you're creating or to your project or to what your project is trying to achieve on one scale. And on the other axis, we put the impact that the stakeholder can have on the success of your project. The attitude can be broadly supportive or broadly negative. And remember, if there's any chance that your stakeholders will see this, then rather than represent them as having a negative attitude, represent them as having some legitimate concerns that you need to address. And their impact can be high or low. And as with every tool, you can modify this to have different variations. So you could have positive, negative or a neutral attitude, high, medium or low level of impact. But let's keep it simple. And if we keep it simple, one of the main benefits of this analysis tool is that there is a very clear stakeholder engagement strategy for each of our four boxes. In the top right hand box, where stakeholders are already supportive and their impact is high, what do we want to do? We want to engage them in what we're trying to achieve and employ their advocacy to help us because they're supportive and because they already can have a high impact. They become very useful advocates for our project. Below that, also with a high impact, but now with some reservations at least and possibly outright opposition at worst, we have the stakeholders that we almost certainly need to prioritize. And for these, we need to win them over to our side. We need to woo and win them. We need to do everything that is lawful and ethical to persuade them of the benefits of our project. And as a minimum, we want to neutralize their opposition, ideally convert them into supporters. At the top left, we do have supporters for the project, but they don't have much of an impact, possibly because of their role, possibly because of their level of involvement, possibly because some people may not consider them as important as other stakeholders. Consequently, what we need to do is to inform them about what we're doing and to coach them as to how they can be more helpful in advocating for our project and supporting what we're doing. And in the bottom left hand corner, we've got the stakeholders who aren't so keen on what we're doing, but don't have a lot of impact. And whilst it can be tempting to ignore them, that would be wrong, partly, of course, because anybody can have an impact and we may misread the situation. They may acquire some more influence, but fundamentally because it would be disrespectful to ignore any of our stakeholders. What we want to do is to keep an eye on them, to monitor them and make sure that when it comes to it, we can outvote them. That is to say, we can neutralize the impact of their opposition. My second tool is a sociogram. And this is a simple tool for understanding the relationships between various stakeholders. What we would do here is put circles or squares or some form of notation onto a sheet of paper or onto a diagram representing each of our important stakeholders or stakeholder groups. And it is for us to decide which ones to include and which ones we don't need to include. And then you would link up each stakeholder to other stakeholders with whom there is a relationship. We can also use the strength of the line, either thin or thick or dotted or complete, 
to represent the strength of that relationship. And we can also put arrows onto that line to represent the directions of influence. If they both influence one another, it's a double headed arrow. If on the other hand, one stakeholder primarily influences another, it's a single arrow. And of course, by putting the project onto there as a central stakeholder, we can see how we can use some of the stakeholders we have a strong relationship with and over whom we have a degree of influence to then influence other stakeholders. Third is the proximity chart. And the proximity chart simply shows the proximity or closeness of different stakeholders to the project itself. We can simply represent this as a set of concentric circles, possibly dividing the circles into two to indicate broadly supportive and broadly antagonistic stakeholder groups, although we don't need to complicate it. You can then define what you mean by the different tiers of proximity of the stakeholders. For example, in the center, we have the stakeholders who are directly involved, perhaps day to day with the project and its outcome. And then another tier of routinely involved stakeholders who have quite a significant involvement, but not as intimately attached to the project as our central tier. Beyond that, our stakeholders with whom we may have regular contact, but they're not routinely involved. We may not be communicating with them very regularly. And finally, we have an outer tier, stakeholders who are peripherally involved with the project. These are relatively remote. They are still stakeholders to the project, but the impact of the project on them, the impact of them on the project is very minor indeed. Now, at three and a half, not quite a separate tool, but a simplification of this is a lovely metaphor that a former colleague of mine used where she referred to the fried egg diagram with a central yolk of core stakeholders an outer white of lesser stakeholders and then outside of the egg are people who are stakeholders of the project but are very remote from the project the influence of those stakeholders on the project or the impact of the project on them is minor the fried egg diagram reminds us of the value of keeping it simple my fourth tool is a force field diagram Simply, we put the project in the center and then we show our stakeholders as applying forces upon the project. Obviously, we have our supporters pushing the project forward and our opposers trying to drive the project back. And we can represent each stakeholder by an arrow and the size of the arrow or the strength of the arrow represents the level of impact or influence they can have over the project. But of course, not everyone is either for or against our project. And we also have two other classes of stakeholders. We have the neutrals who are stakeholders to the project, but don't really mind either way because its impact on them, whether it goes ahead or whether it doesn't go ahead, doesn't make a big difference to them. And we also have the floating voters, those stakeholders who are likely to have an opinion, but have not yet made up their mind. And of course, these are a vital set of stakeholders, because if we can influence them early and influence them effectively, we can help them to make up their mind to become supporters. My fifth tool comes from the world of marketing and it's persona cards. If you are serious about stakeholder analysis and stakeholder engagement, then create a record for each stakeholder where you record information about them in some detail. You can do this obviously physically using cards or using any of a number of software tools. And a persona card will contain whatever information you consider appropriate to keep about the stakeholder. But remember data protection, remember the importance of keeping this data safe and not putting anything onto your persona cards that you wouldn't be happy to share the wider world. Examples of what you might put onto the persona card is possibly a photo of an individual to make it easy to, to recognize them or a logo for an organization and certainly the name of the individual and their affiliation. You will also have contact details, perhaps email addresses, phone numbers, 
physical addresses, those sorts of things. Then we get into what it is that you want to record that will help you to do your job of engaging effectively with that stakeholder. You might record some characteristics of that stakeholder, personality assessment, what role they're in. But then we move into the pure play stakeholder engagement data sets. Things like their attitude to the project, their interests, their priorities, their needs the power that they hold, who they influence, and of course, the impact that you assess that they can have on your project. And finally, my sixth tool is a stakeholder register. If you're creating persona cards, an alternative or a complementary approach is to keep a database of all your stakeholders. This can be nothing more complicated than a spreadsheet, or it could be a custom database application like a CRM system. And again, customer relationship management or CRM is something we take from the world of marketing that can be very useful to us in large scale, long term project management. So whenever you are running a project, you will need to engage with stakeholders. And if you're going to do it effectively, you need to understand those stakeholders. And here are six fantastic tools to help you. Please do give a thumbs up if you like this video. There'll be loads more great project management content to come. So please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.